Today we'll be painting Gimli, son of Gloin, the stout dwarven member of the Fellowship. With the altered root of the Fellowship, Gimli was eager to head towards the Mines of Moria and see his kin once more. However, upon arrival, he was faced with the sad truth of Barlin's attempt to recolonize the mines from the goblins was in vain. This is no mine. It's a tomb. And now, let's paint Gimli. As always, we need to prime our miniature before we start painting it. And today, Gimli was spray black for the undercoat. With the majority of the colour being a dark red for the coat, we proceeded to begin our first base coat with chaotic red. Not worrying too much if the paint lands on the other areas, as we are going to paint over the top with the other base coats afterwards. A couple thin layers were added with the red to get a better coverage for the paint. Next up, the face was worked on. We want to do it at this point due to it being sunken in with him wearing his helmet. Again, a thin layer is your friend at this point, as we don't want to clog up any of the facial details. Continuing on, the silver for the chainmail was then applied using gunmetal. At this point, now we need to be careful not to get any onto our red. But if we do, then it's not a bother, as we can tidy this up before we add our washers. Gimli does wear a fair bit of brown and red, so we will use a few different brown paints on our miniature today. Firstly, a dark brown of mocha skin was applied onto the belt, including the pouches on the back, as well as his trousers, shin straps, and the top of the helmet. The levers for the gloves and the boots were painted with a lighter colour of oak brown. We will use different colours for the layers and highlights later on, and it will give some variety to the materials that Gimli is wearing. And for the wood of the axes, another brown. Who would have guessed it? This time it's a different shade of paint to the previous that we have just used for other clothing. The cloth that he is carrying, I'm thinking it's some sort of wilderness blanket, we will give this a brighter colour, which is not brown, to break up the miniature a bit visually. Now for the beard and hair. It was a bit difficult to judge the exact colour from the movie stills due to the different lights being used. However, there are a few nice photos of Gimli in issue 21 of the old Battle Games of Middle-earth magazine. And again, it's brown, but with flicks of ginger in it. So we shall give an initial base coat of dirt splatter, which will be seen below our layer of orange later on. And what battle-hardened dwarf character wouldn't be complete without a dash of gold or copper to their ornate crafted armour? That's what we will do for the next couple of stages. Firstly, the shoulder pads and parts of the crown were painted with greedy gold. And for the other areas, such as the belt buckle and the armour coming off the back of the helmet, true copper was applied. To give Gimli's helmet a bit more detail, a silver colour was added around the side sections of the helmet to give the impression that the gold parts within are separate in detail. Silver was also applied to the back of the helmet where the linked armour is. However, we painted vertically to every other row, so the final result will be one row copper and the next silver. The wrist guards were given the same red colour as the material for Gimli's coat and we will add some details to this later on in the video. I went back in with some true copper and applied it to the front of Gimli's boot for a bit more added detail. Now the dwarf will start to take shape with some shade paints. These will be washed onto the miniature and give Gimli that three-dimensional look. However, for the first paint of mid-brown, this was applied to all of the red and it will tint it slightly with a brown colour to give a darker maroon finish. Flesh wash was then used for the face. Again, be careful not to add too much here so it doesn't clog up the recesses of the face, such as the eyes. Then the gold was given the same treatment with the same wash. This also dulls down the shine of the gold, 
you could instead just add a small amount only to the recessed areas to preserve that shiny look to the gold. All the brown clothed areas were given a strong tone wash to create the shaded areas, as well as the two axes that he's carrying. There are a number of poses for Gimli in the range, where he is armed with either the two axes, like here, or his classic double-handed axe. Which of these sculpts is your favourite? Let me know in the comments below. And now to the last of our shade paints, Dark Tone. And this will be used to create the darkest shaded areas. It's a great paint to use on the sculpted details of the chainmail, as it runs into the gaps nicely. The cloth he is carrying on his back was given a coat of the same paint. But a quick tip here for you. If you use your finger and rub the top layer off, the shade will stay in the recesses, giving you a quick layered paint look. And a small amount of dark tone was applied to the deep recessed areas of Gimli's beard to create depth. A similar method was used for his coat to paint the shaded areas where the folds of the cloth lay. And of course, the two heads of the X's were also painted with the wash. With this stage complete, we can now start adding details and highlights to the model. Gimli's eyes were painted first as they are in a tricky position due to the helmet. So any mistakes here can be covered up later when we get to the face and the helmet stages. Mocha skin was used for the whole eye socket. This was to darken the sunken area of the face and also add a base coat for the eyes. This was then followed up by applying two dots of spaceship exterior to each corner of the eye. You may need to rotate the model as necessary to help get the brush tip where you need to, even if it's upside down. For the face, I wanted to give it a reddish shade to some of the areas of the skin. So diluting our red paint with some water, it was carefully applied to the face, especially around the nose and where the skin is next to the helmet. Once completely dry, we can layer on a couple paints with a fine tip brush. Here I am using an Army Painter Detail Brush. I will leave links in the description below for the brushes and the paint sets that I have used here in the video, just in case you're in the market for some. Barbarian Flesh was used first, and then this was followed up by Cobalt Skin. We focus mainly on the lip, nose and upper cheeks leaving alone those redded, shaded areas. The chainmail was next to be highlighted. This lies on the inner part of the miniature, and again, any mistakes can be rectified by painting over easily enough. Whilst the paint was still on the palette, the axe heads were given a highlight too. As always, rotate the miniature as necessary so that it's comfortable for you to paint. And now for the axes themselves. We will highlight the wood, but also give a quick and easy line texture to mimic a wood grain appearance. Monster Brown was first used. The side of the brush can be used to pick out the edges of the axe, whilst the tip of the brush can be used to create the wood grain effect. This is fairly quick to achieve, and the end results look nice enough for the gaming table. The same process was then used for the second highlight of Banshee Brown. As mentioned earlier, Gimli has a few brown materials and textures to him. So now we can select paints which are different colours to add variations to these browns. The gloves, which have a pale leather look to them, were painted with dry rust. This is technically an effect paint, but mixed with a bit of medium can produce a nice orangey tint to a leather just like here and Desert Yellow was applied as a thin highlight to the tips of the fingers and the knuckles. The boots and belt were given an initial highlight of leather brown. Just picking out the top and the bottom of the belt and the toe section and shin guards for the boots. The pouches on the back were also highlighted at this stage too with the same colour. A final, thinner highlight of Basilisk Brown was painted to the same areas. 
And whilst you watch this step, my question of the day for you is... The next Fellowship video will be a Hobbit. Which of these halflings would you like to see painted next? Just pop your answers in the comments below, as I do read every single one of them. Now to the darker brown of the trousers and helmet. They were highlighted with werewolf fur first, and then followed by monster brown for the second highlight. This combination of colors will give a subtle difference to the color of the boots, so not everything will look the same. Again, a couple quick highlights were added to the grey cloth on his back, to make this grey material stand out more over the red. And once this has been completed, we can move on to Gimli's coat, which is the main section of the miniature. But don't forget to highlight those cheeky little straps. Any light brown will do here. We want to create a subtle lighter red over our maroon colour, and to do this, we are going to dilute some Abomination Gore paint with some water. This will make the paint slightly transparent once painted onto the miniature. Brush the paint onto the coat with multiple layers, and this will build up to a darkish red. Just make sure not to paint into the shaded folds of the cloth, as we want the darker shadows to be seen. Afterwards, a non-diluted Abomination Gore was applied to the coat and the wrist guards as a highlight. Next, fur brown was used to highlight the upper areas of the cloth, where the folds are prominent, as well as the horizontal details across the bottom of the coat. Adding a second or even a third highlight like this to materials on a character is great, and they can look even more detailed than an average warrior. By doing so, this allows your characters to stand out from your other troops on the battlefield. But everyone has their own limited amount of time for their hobby, which is why I show you options for you lovely people to follow along with in these videos. So saying that, the coat looks good enough for gaming, and if you are happy with that, then you can skip the next couple of stages and move on to the hair. And for everyone else, we will be creating extra details to the coat and the gold to make Gimli stand out even more. Now, Dwarven armor has lots of intricate patterns as you can see here, which will be difficult to replicate on a miniature. So we will create simplified patterns which is much easier to follow. And hopefully a beginner painter wouldn't find it too daunting to tackle and create something that they would be proud of once they have finished. Using fur brown, lines were painted in a diagonal manner on the top of the wrist guards, and they were formed to make a criss-cross pattern. The same technique was used on the horizontal part of Gimli's coat, but this time using scar tissue, as this lighter pink will stand out even more as we look at the miniature from the front. And whilst we still had the paint on our palette, a few thin lines were painted onto the cloth folds, as well as some highlights. Now for the gold. Earlier, we applied a flesh wash which tinted the appearance of the gold, and now we are going to use mocha skin for the recesses that run around the shoulder plate. Afterwards, we are going to mimic scales with the same paint. To achieve this, we will paint a series of upside down Vs going across the armor plate. And then doing the same above until the whole shoulder is covered. You can practice this first on a bit of paper or a scrap model if you have one, until you are happy. Finally, a silver highlight was applied to the copper and the gold areas of our miniature using plate male metal. And to make our scales stand out even more on the shoulder, a dot was applied at the top of each V to give that shiny, highlighted appearance. And what would a dwarf be without their beard? As mentioned earlier, Gimli has a hint of ginger in his brown beard and hair. And we want to paint this so it looks different to the other browns that we have used already. And so, lava orange was applied to the beard and the hair's highlights. This was added carefully so that the brown underneath could still be shown in the darker areas and between each plait. To make some of the hair even lighter, 
A 50-50 mix of lava orange and elven flesh was formulated to brighten up the orange for an additional highlight. Lastly, silver was applied to the hair beads for our final detail. And the dwarf is finished. And now he's ready to take on some goblins in Barlin's honor. If you want to do some similar basing, then do check out the how to create mine bases video after this one. And we have completed our second miniature for our fellowship. Be sure to browse the rest of the Fellowship of the Ring playlist on the channel. So you can follow along and see each member get painted. And if you have found value in the video today or simply liked some of my tips and tricks, then please do let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, and maybe tell a friend if they have some Minds of Moria games to play. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on hobbying.